guys, so I had my first visit with the OB today, and she was really bitchy and judgmental, and I think she disliked me too because she set me up with a new one, like, at the end of the visit. She's like, okay, so next time you're gonna be seeing someone else, and I was like, oh, thank god. Um, no, she was a bitch about me being a single mom. She was like, you know, asking about my partner, and I was like, I don't have a partner, <laughs> you know, and She's like, uh, the kid's other parent? And I was like, oh yeah, um, we're not involved anymore, you know. He's an ex. And she's like, but you have family to support you, right? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm the one that, you know, my dad has made it pretty clear I'm on my own with this, you know. <laughs> and she's like, but who's going to be in the delivery room with you? And I was like, medical professionals, I hope. Like, why would I want my dad in the delivery room with me? Like, that is intensely personal, and um, he doesn't really need to see that. And as for having, you know, a boyfriend or a friend there, mm, mm -mm, no. You know, and she just, like, acted like she had never heard of anything like that before. And, yeah, she had a terrible bedside manner. She also was bitching about my BMI and how... Like, I shouldn't gain more than 10 or 20 pounds. And that's through the entire pregnancy. And I'm like, um, okay. Before I got pregnant, I was up at about 205. And then I dropped down to, like, 190. And now I'm back up to 197. So I'm actually way a little bit less than I did before I got pregnant. Okay, so first of all, that. Second of all, um... It took me, like, a decade to gain 20 pounds. Like, I've gained 20 pounds the entire decade. Okay. So, you know, shut your hush, <laughs> essentially. And she just, like, assumed that my history of asthma, high blood pressure, etc. came from when I was at my heaviest. Like, no. No. I started having lung problems when I was 21. Okay, and I was like 180 pounds then, and I'm going to be 29 on the 9th, so in like four days, okay. So, no, um, and I had lung problems from when I was 21 till, um, I guess, let's see, 2017-ish, so 26 so from 21 to 26, I haven't used my inhaler. I think I used it a few times in 2018 because of the wildfires. I'm not sure if I used it in 2019, but I have not used my inhalers recently, is my thing. <laughs> and so that's not a weight thing. And as for the high blood pressure, I'm pretty sure that that, along with my history of illness, um, was stress-induced. So it was probably just caused by me being around people who caused me a lot of stress. And now I'm not in contact with most of those people, so I'm not stressed out, so I'm not sick all the time. I got, you know, I got a cold earlier, and I kicked it in like three days, which is great. I had elderberry gummies and vitamins every day, so I'm happy. And then, um, she was also a bitch about my immune system. <laughs> like, I declined the flu shot because every time that I take the flu shot, now I know I'm not getting sick from the virus that's in the flu shot because it's a dead virus, okay, but my immune system overreacts to the point where I get seriously ill for a week or more, okay, and I cannot afford to miss that much work, and I don't want to miss that much work because then I'm out of the loop on what's going on in the office with the clients and everything. So, I said I don't want the flu shot because I'm immunocompromised and I keep getting sick. And then she's, like, trying to guilt trip me about how I'm putting the baby at risk, you know. And it's like, well, okay, um, I can take my chances and maybe get sick, or I can get a shot and definitely get sick, you know. Like, which one's a bigger risk to my baby? And, oh my god, she was such a bitch about it. And I, you know, told her multiple times, I can't 
it's not that I don't want to, it's that I can't because of my immune system. And she's like, well, when you're pregnant, your immune system is wicked. Like, exactly, that's why I shouldn't have it, right? And she's like, and there's like three types of virus going around. Actually, there's four types of virus going around. She missed the coronavirus. And I'm just like, okay, but... Again, it's less of a risk to my baby if I don't get the thing that's going to 100% make me sick. Okay? And she's like, oh, I'm not trying to pressure you. I'm just letting you know. I'm like, but I told you multiple fucking times. You know, I didn't cuss her out, but I, you know, I said I told you multiple times. I can't. Yeah. Um, let's see. Then I told her about, um... I told her about when I was at Good Sam and I was seen for bleeding, um, and it turned out to be something completely different, but one of the nurses spotted something, um, and she had me treated for chlamydia and gonorrhea, and then on Christmas I found out that I was positive for, or I had been positive for chlamydia, and I'm not anymore. And the nurse was like, oh, did you tell your partner about it so he could get tested? And I was like, "What, lady, I don't have a partner. <laughs> you know, I said it a bit nicer than that, but it's like, I don't have a partner. And, you know, she made it clear that she meant, like, the person that got me pregnant. And I was like, yeah, of course I did. But, you know, I don't know if he got tested. She's like, how could you not know? And I was like... Because he called it bullshit, so I don't know, and because talking to him was stressing me out, so I stopped, so, you know, and again, she's, like, showing more concern for people who aren't her patient, and it was really, bother you know, bothering me, and at one point, I actually thought she was going to ask me why I kept the baby, she was actually asking me something else, um, so, like, as most of you know, this was an unplanned pregnancy. I did not plan um, any aspect of this. I did not really have any say in any aspect of this. And, um, like, she made a really big deal out of that last part. I said I didn't really have any say over any aspect of the conception. And she's like, are you, well, why didn't you... And I was like, are you going to ask me why I didn't abort the baby? <laughs> and she was like, no, why didn't you report it? And I was like, what report? Oh, um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons, but, um, like the main one is, is that it's just such an arduous process and, ah, excuse me, whoops. Sorry, it's such an arduous process, and I don't really want to put either of us through that process, because, like, it's overly stressful, and I do actually want my ex to have visitation, you know? Um, you know, maybe supervised visitation at first, but, like, at least visitation, at least some involvement in the kid's life, to, you know whatever degree is best for the kid, all right, and I'm not, and I don't want more conflict with the family than me being pregnant has already caused, because, like, I don't know, um, honestly, I don't know if keeping it or getting rid of it would have been worse, it's, um, as far as my relationship with his family goes, um, but either way, uh, you know, like, just the bottom line is that there was no way that I was gonna get out of that situation, okay, um, there just wasn't, and, like, he wasn't violent or anything like that, so... And then she's, like, bitching about how much of a risk that is to other girls. And I'm like, what other girls? I'm the only one he feels that entitled to, and it's because of our history, you know? And she just, like, looks at me, like... 
And honestly, if she was going to be that much of a judgmental bitch, then I should have just gone for the maximum shock value. Now, this isn't, again, this isn't the reason that I'm not reporting. It's just, if she's going to be a bitch about it, I might as well have just said, well, I'm not reporting him because I'm in love with his dad. So, you know. Either way, though, she's just like... <sighs> but, no, like, we were in a secluded area. I went there as a friend... Um, I thought maybe I could try being, you know, supportive, um, maybe even romantic, but I didn't want a sexual aspect to things, but he was so just pressury about it that there was just, I didn't feel like there was any way that I was going to get out of the situation you know, so it was really, like, it was coercion, but it wasn't, like, forceful, so it's not really worth reporting, and it's not a risk to anybody else, because, again, it's only because of our history that he felt like he could do that, okay, so I'm not putting other girls at risk, and besides, those other girls are not your patient, I'm your patient, you know? Anyway, I didn't really want to get into all that, so, but <laughs> I'm recording this on my phone, so it's kind of a bitch to, like, go back and try to edit it, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and, like, as for whether it's bad taste for me to keep one guy's kid when I'm in love with someone else that's related to him, like, maybe it is, but, again, like, I'm, I'm going to be 29, okay, this is like, if I'm going to have kids, this would be the age to do it, and, um, it's also the closest that I'm ever going to get to him anyway, so, you know, why not keep 25% of his DNA as a pet, and that's a fucked up way of looking at it, but there you go. And, you know, just so you know, I treat my pets very, very well. Like, <laughs> our cats are the most spoiled cats. Like, my dad's and my cats, they are the most spoiled cats in the neighborhood. And they are so, so sweet. And I love them so much. Anyway, I know, I know kids are, are different, but... So, anyway, um, the OB was a bitch, and she was stressful. And, um, I did, you know, tell her, look, I'm here about my baby. I'm not here about my relationships, you know. Um, uh, she has to request the um, sonogram from basically the lab across campus. So uh, I'll be getting a call about that, and that's when I can find out the baby's sex. Uh, I did get to hear its heartbeat. It's It sounded really, really fast to me, but it's like 115, which I'm told is normal. So, that's good. Um, it's doing well. Um, I got some blood work done. Um, I had them take it out of my hand. You can see the little dot there. That's the little... Yeah, it's under the freckle. Um, they took, like, 12 vials. They're testing for a lot of things. Some of it's standard, and then some of it is due to, like, I'm not aware of all of my family history because, um, A, my mother was adopted, and B, my mother is not, <laughs> like, I didn't grow up with her, so she lives in Europe. Although she is really excited to have a grandchild, so I'm happy about that. And the lab technician who did my blood work was really, really nice. I really liked her. I wish she was my doctor. Um, although, you know, my new doctor, um, basically I had said, you know, I've been having trouble finding a doctor because I need someone who can basically communicate with me because I have a lot of trouble, you know, parsing accents and stuff because I have auditory processing issues. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'll get you a white doctor. And I was like, okay, that's not what I meant, but okay. <laughs> So she reassigned me to a woman named Dr. Bruce. I'm going to be seeing her in four weeks. And it's going to be another new patient intake or something. Which I guess she's going to see my charts and stuff. But hopefully she doesn't like make a judgment call 
like the second she sees me like this one obviously did my dad said that um this doctor basically treated me like I was some flaky teenager and not like a 29 year old woman <laughs> and I'm like yeah you know come to think of it she kind of did like you shouldn't put your patient on the defensive about their relationship or um, their weight or, you know, and my weight isn't really, doesn't really affect my health that much just because I've always been fat. Like, I mean, not always. I wasn't fat when I was like 10, <laughs> but I started getting weight when I was 12. Okay. And I got it back down when I was 18, but I was still, you know, when I was 18, I was 145 pounds. Okay. And I'm like five foot three, so BMI is bullshit, though. So, I mean, I exercise, I walk. Um, I checked out a bunch of dance DVDs from the library. They're actually sitting right over there in that backpack. And um, so I walk, I dance, I um, I do yoga, and all that. But I'm I'm still fat. So, and I'm not gonna like. St restrict my eating or starve myself because that's not good for the baby and besides babies love fat moms so I don't understand what's up her butt <laughs> basically and I hate how she just like assumes that I like soda she's like okay so you can't have a lot of sugar so don't drink soda and I was like I don't like soda but thanks um although I was so upset at the end of the visit that I just and you know after having my blood drawn I was like a little woozy so um, basically, I went to a pho place and just got me some boba. Like, it, it was a boba smoothie. It's a smoothie with boba pearls. Um, which I know that has a lot of sugar in it, but fuck that bitch. Like, seriously. I hope my new doctor isn't so judgmental. And, um, and, like, on the off chance that my ex watches my vlogs, it's like, yeah, I'm willing to let him be a part of my baby's life as long as he's matured and as long as it's not about the ego it's about the kid it's about what's you know it's about what's best for their development and yeah I believe in father's rights yeah I believe that you know he should be involved as long as his involvement is mentally healthy for the child okay I'm not gonna be I'm not going to use my kid as a pawn to hurt someone else. That is bullshit. So, I would never do that. Um, but I just don't like when every time that I try to talk to someone, they're stressing me out because they believe that they're entitled to a romantic or sexual relationship with me. I don't want a sexual relationship. I don't want a man's needs distracting me from the needs of my child. I don't want, you know... I just, I don't want any bullshit, basically. Anyway, also today, I called the Wake office and got myself an appointment, and uh, I have it screenshotted somewhere, the stuff that I'm supposed to bring, but I have an appointment on Monday, which means I'm not really, Saturday is going to basically be my day of rest, because I'm working Thursday and Friday, Friday I'm staying late at the office, because A, office party, B, my birthday celebration, Sunday's my birthday, and I'm having hopefully a couple of people over, um, one of them might make it, one of them might not, oh, and anyway, um, I'm also not really planning to tell my kid about all of the issues between my ex and me, because, like, I don't want to be the kind of parent that puts the kid in the middle of the parent's arguments, because I find that unethical, um, I feel like kids should be able to enjoy their relationship with their parents and not have it be like one versus the other. So again, Loki, if you're watching this, do not fucking turn our kid against me. Seriously. I'm not going to do it to you. You don't do it to me. I'm also not ever going to show them these vlogs. <laughs> um, so, you know, just be chill and mellow and we can figure shit out, maybe. Okay, uh, that's pretty much all I had to say. Sorry it's so long. Bye, guys.